Good morning, Online Church. It's so good to be in your homes again and here in the service. And I just want to welcome everybody. And as we stand and get our hearts ready for worship, I just want to remind you of the scripture that says that Jesus is the light of this world. And where he is, there is no darkness. You know, sometimes the darkness in our lives can feel like we have booked into a cheap motel with 15 watt bulbs with just enough light so that you don't stumble, fall and kill yourself. But I just want to say this, God's light, when you open your heart, allow, when you open your heart and allow His light to come in, He shines His light on any dark area of your life. And that light brings healing and brings hope. But it comes from that openness and that open heart to worship God and to praise Him. And when you worship Him and praise Him, the capacity of your heart enlarges. And that light just streams in and He sheds light on those dark moments in your life. And He sets you free and He brings restoration and healing and wholeness. So let's stand and open up in prayer this evening. Father God, we come into your presence knowing that you are a mighty God, you are a holy God, and we give all praise to you tonight. As we come and we worship you, we ask you to shine your light into, onto every area of our lives, onto every dark patch that we may be experiencing in our lives. Turn up the dim light, Father God. Turn up your light as your Holy Spirit floods this place today, as, this, as your Holy Spirit floods our lives and sheds light in every area. We just give you thanks and we say welcome, Holy Spirit. Anytime a heart turns from darkness to light, anytime temptation comes and someone stands to fight, anytime somebody lives to serve and not be served, I know, I know, I know, I know. God is on the move. And 
and only only you can make things right again come chase our wandering hearts these prodigals we are don't wait don't wait open up the heavens pour out your presence we want to see revival bring us back to you oh how we need you to we want to see praise you Jesus and we lift you up over our nation we thank you that Lord you are renewing you are rebuilding you are restoring our lives our community our land and our nation and we we cry out to you in worship and we celebrate your name we declare the blood of Jesus over our lives and we honor you and we thank you in Jesus name as we Draw near to you as we study your word. We thank you that your Holy Spirit is the great teacher of the church. We honor and we cherish you and we welcome you in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You can be seated. And I just want to say good morning to all your beautiful people in your homes as you join us today online as we study the word, as we've worshiped God, and as we continue to move forward in this new season. Well, it's so exciting that uh, our church is open, 
Uh, we have a service every week at 8 o'clock and at 10 o'clock. It's a one-hour service. It's a family service. And now we want to just let you know from next Sunday, you don't have to book. You can just come along because we can now seat 120 people each service. Hallelujah. With the new level one restrictions, we want to just let you know that we are opening up Thursday nights to anybody who wants to come. We're opening up our two Sunday services. Bring your family. Get your ha half an hour early for each service so we can still register, do all the protocols, and let's move forward with strength and victory. Let's invite our neighbors. Let's invite our friends. And let's reach out to the lost together. Well, we just want to thank everyone who's been giving faithfully, and you can continue to do so. We'd ask you to continue to do so. You can sow through EFT. Our banking details are on, on all our social media, or if you want to find them out, send us an email or a WhatsApp, and we'll make sure you get them. You can also give via SnapScan, which is appearing on your screen right now, and we just want to thank you for your generosity. Well, we started a new series last week, and I just want you to know it really stirred my heart, and uh, I know the Lord has been ministering to me and challenging me and encouraging me uh, to move forward in this new season, because I believe God has got good things in store for you and I. And for those of you who are online, uh, dig in with us to the Word. Don't forget, you can follow on new version. Uh, go to the events, and we are live there if you want to take your own notes. So we started a series last week called Secrets, and today we are in the second part, and the subtitle tonight is Understand. Last week, uh, we spoke about guarding our hearts, and uh, tonight we're going to continue in that as we look at the second thing that helps us to guard our hearts. Last week, we looked at we need to grow in grace. Tonight, we're going to look at the you of God, which is understand. But let's turn to our text scripture, Psalm 25, verse 14. It says, the secret of the Lord is with those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Wow, the Lord wants to show us the secrets of his covenant. How awesome is it that as he starts to share that with us in our hearts and, and, and it renews our minds, it's not just going to be awesome, but it's going to be helpful and it's going to be uplifting and it's going to take us to the place we need to be. Now we shared last week and I don't have time to recap, but remember last week we spoke about the game book and the playbook. And it's important that we remember that throughout this series because it plays such an important role in us understanding that the game book is for everybody, but the playbook are for those who are on the team and are in the game. Just say to yourself, say, I'm in the game. Now to explain this, let me ask you to turn with me to Mark chapter 4, and we're briefly going to look at three verses which we're going to dig into Later on tonight, in verse 10 of Mark 4, it says, But when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. And he said to them, To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but to those who are outside, all things come in parables. How you know? There we see it. The game book and the playbook. It says, when they came alone and they pressed into Jesus and it was just them, he said, listen, to you it has been given to know the mysteries. Say it with me again. Say, I'm in. I'm in. Verse 12. So seeing, they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven you. Now, if you read that verse on face value, you think, wow, God is quite harsh. He's like, I don't want to share these truths because I don't want them to repent. No, no. The secrets of God's word are hidden for those whose hearts are open and their motives are genuine because they want to be close to God. They want to experience Jesus in their lives. And we're going to see how important that is uh, through the course 
of the evening. Now, let me quickly give you some examples of secrets because I don't want you to leave here and those of you who are listening, go away and think, well, I'm waiting for this big secret God's going to give me. And then you kind of feel, well, I don't have a secret, so maybe I'm not in and maybe I didn't get it. I want you to know God's secrets are simple, they're powerful, and they make an impact in our lives. And sometimes, you know, I've discovered in life, it's the little things that make a big difference. Little adjustments we make in our lives can release a flow of God's grace and anointing and power and revelation that can literally change the landscape we're living in. So let me give you a few examples. Firstly, one of the secrets that we find in the game book is forgiveness. How you know, there are plenty of, plenty of stories about forgiveness in the Bible. And how you know, that's available to everyone. But how many of you know, once you're saved and you experience the secret power of forgiveness and it changes your heart, how many of you know, you now know how to forgive other people? So it's available to everybody, but the secret truth of its power, when you experience it, will revolutionize your life and you begin to realize forgiveness is not something you give someone else, it's the greatest gift you give yourself. Another example, tithing. How you know there's so much controversy around tithing in the church world today? And people say, well, we're under grace, we don't have to tithe it. People say, no, but it's the old covenant and, and there's all this thing. How you know God just stays silent because in the game book, tithing is a principle before the law, during the law, and after the law. But how many of you know when you discover the secret of giving God a tenth of what all belongs to him anyway, and you unlock the power of wealth and prosperity and flourishing in your lives, I want you to know you'll never stop tithing. One more example. How many of you know the experience of seeing God work in your life and take you through a situation that you know, without a doubt, if it wasn't for God, you would not have been where you are today. I remember when my first wife, Debbie, passed away. I was devastated. My family was devastated. We grappled personally with this whole idea was, I'm a man of faith. I preach healing. I prayed for her. The church fasted for her. We did everything we knew to do, and yet she still did not receive her healing. But you know, over the next years, God shared secrets with me that not only carried me through that season, but it totally changed the landscape of my ministry. It gave me an empathy and compassion that that I never had before. And he shared some secret stuff about the process of that story that I would never share with anyone else, but it brought a comfort and a peace and a strength to my heart. The secrets of God are with those who fear him. Hallelujah. My prayer for you and for our church is that God would share his secrets with you that are relevant to your life that will revolutionize your faith and cause you to walk like you've never walked before. So we started last week and we said, what is the key to this, to this whole receiving the secret? We spoke about the heart. We spoke about how important it is to guard your heart with all diligence. And so in Proverbs 4 verse 23, in the Amplified, it says this, keep and guard your heart with all vigilance and above all that you guard, for out of it flow the springs of of life. That word keep there is the Hebrew word natsah, and its primitive root in the good sense means this. It means to guard, which covers the following three things, to protect, to maintain, and to obey. That's how you guard your heart. Protect, maintain, and obey. So we looked at the word guard. We're using it as an acrostic. Last week we looked at G, And the G stands for grace, grow in grace, continue in grace. Now listen carefully, grace gets you in the team. Grace gets you on the field. Listen to Hebrews 4 and verse 16. Let us then, in the NRV, it's not on the notes, you'll just have to listen. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence. Wow. So that we may receive mercy 
and find grace to help us in our time of need. So tonight we're going to look at the U. The U stands for understanding. Understanding. And turn with me to Mark 4 verse 13. And that's, that's that scripture we started sharing. We read up to verse 12. Look what verse 13 says. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? Two powerful things stand out here for me. Number one, understanding is vital in your relationship with God. As a matter of fact, your faith cannot operate beyond your level of understanding of the word. Not only that, he says this particular parable that we're going to look at lays out the pattern and the platform for how to interpret things in your life through the word of God and that when you have understanding of this parable, you'll understand the principle of how the kingdom operates. The Hebrew word and the Greek word, yeah, it's two words for the word understand. It's the word adu and the word gnosko. This is what it means. It's quite a long definition, so you'll have to listen. It means to perceive, notice, discern, or discover. Listen to this. It means to turn your eyes or your mind and put your attention on something specific. The word understand means to ascertain what must be done by inspection or examination. Jesus said this, if you don't examine and inspect and give your attention and perceive and notice and discover what the word is and how the word works and why it works, how will you then understand any of the other parables? The word understand here means this, it means to force the meaning of something, to know and become skilled in doing something, and to have a regard or to cherish something. He's saying this, you need to cherish the word of God in your life. And you see, so understanding helps me to guard my heart because it helps you to know why it is you need to guard your heart. Here's what understanding does. The minute you start to gain understanding, it puts you on an upward trajectory in your life. So number two, the you of God, God in your heart, is you've got to gain understanding. Understanding brings clarity about how things work and they'll empower you and I to take action in our lives. For years, I thought I had faith because I'd heard so many good things and so many lovely promises and I was like, yeah, I believe that I'm standing on that. But it was only when understanding came that it drove me to action. Because it empowered me. I understood, okay, that's how this works. That's why this works. And it released me into an upward trajectory. But to grow in understanding and to develop your understanding, here's the truth that you need to embrace tonight. You will have to confront the unbelief in your life. And you know what? Many Christians today, and including me sometimes, it's difficult to face the unbelief in your life. It's difficult to confront things in your life. And sometimes it's those very things that you confront that release you into the things that you need to understand. Proverbs 4 verse 7 says it like this, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom and in all you're getting, get understanding. Listen to what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 11 and it seems like a, like a verse that is out of context because how many know the 1 Corinthians 13 is the love chapter of the, of the Bible. But look here at verse 11. He says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, look what, I put away childish things. Here's the reality. If you don't grow in your understanding, you'll never grow up. If you don't grow in your understanding, it will keep you and rob you of your capacity to mature and to grow into and become positioned in the place where God can release the secrets of his covenant into your life. 
It's not that he doesn't love you. It's not that he doesn't care for you. It doesn't, it doesn't mean he doesn't got a plan for you. But you are keeping yourself out of, and the enemy is preventing you from moving into where you and I need to be positioned. And so what happens is we'll keep making elementary mistakes, going round the mountain, and we'll keep making wrong decisions. So all of us tonight need to have this desire and this passion to gain understanding. Listen to what T.D. Jake says. What is normal for a child can be deadly for an adult who still only has the understanding of a child. So I want to talk to you in the remainder of my time about five things that will help you and I to gain understanding in our lives. I'm just going to throw through them as quick as I can and just drop some things into your spirit and, and then you can go away and you can um, mull on them and uh, meditate and uh, ruminate and uh, combobulate and uh, processipate and just gain the understanding that you need. <laughs> you want the meanings of those words? Come back next week. And Mandy will help you. All right, here we go. Five things. Number one, write this down. A, these are simple things. You'll know them, but so don't switch off. Number one, study your Bible. How do I gain understanding? Study your Bible. Listen carefully. Study your Bible with a heart to say, Lord, I want to understand what I'm reading. I want to understand what I'm processing. And I want to take it from here and I want to apply it to my life. James said a very significant, powerful thing in James 1.22. He said, be ye not hearers of the word and not doers. I don't think he said it that way. But you know what I'm saying. He said, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Going to church is amazing. It's one of the secrets of serving God, being part of a local church. It's awesome, it's incredible, but it's not enough. You've got to take what you hear on a Sunday and you've got to apply it on Monday. You've got to study it on Tuesday. You've got to talk about it in small group on Wednesday. You've got to think about it again on Thursday. You've got to remind yourself on Friday and on Saturday, you've got to tell your wife about it. Because those who study their Bible grow in understanding. Listen to Mark 4. We're still in Mark 4, verse 13. And now we're going to drop down to the other verses that start to explain the parable he shared with everybody. He now gives us the secret to those who are in the game. Verses 1 to verses 10 are the game book. Verses 13 to 20 are the playbook. And here we go, verse 13. And he said to them, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? Verse 40. The sower sows the word. Question. What are you sowing into your heart? What are you sowing into your mind? Verse 15. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their heart. Here he describes a heart condition that is unreceptive to the word of God. It hears the word of God, but it cannot receive the word of God, and so it's like the wayside. It refers, if you go study this word in the Greek, it refers to this, listen carefully, a person who has wrong thinking about the word. Listen, they have this stance. I already know that. They have a prideful mindset that says, been there, done that. And so the word gets sown, but immediately Satan comes and he steals that word that is sown in their heart. And so they miss the simplicity of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Verse 16, these likewise are the ones sown on stony ground, who when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness, but they have no root in themselves. 
And so they endure only for a time. And afterwards, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. They hear the word, they receive the word, but they have no root. Last week we spoke about let grace become the root. Let it be established in your heart. Now, what he's describing here is a person who is impatient and hasty for immediate results. They leave church on a Sunday and say, I sowed my finances, why is it not back in my account? They're hasty, they want immediate results, and they want a comfortable Christian life. They're not willing to fight for the benefit that comes from living and serving God consistently. And so what happens is, trouble comes, persecution. Notice why does trouble and persecution come? It comes for the word's sake. Literally, Satan sends trouble and persecution. That's why when, when a Christian gets saved or, or when believers are new in the Lord, don't just say, listen, get saved, everything's going to go well. The reality is it probably won't go well first because the enemy is going to come again. He does not want us to receive the word. He does not want us to grow in the word because he knows the word will change our lives forever. Verse 18, are you glad you came to church today? Are you glad you're watching today online? The word of God is so good and so powerful. Verse 18 says, Now these are the ones sown amongst thorns. They, the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the desire for other things enter in. What does it do? It enters in. Where? Into the heart. And what does it do? It chokes the word and it becomes unfruitful. Some time ago, uh, Mandy and I uh, were doing my favorite thing, as you heard last week, gardening. And we discovered this tree in our garden that was dying. We couldn't understand it. It was in the early days just after we'd bought our house. And we, we spoke to some people and I said, no, no, what's happened is an invader plant has grown up on this tree. It has surrounded this tree And what has happened is it's gone in with its root system and it is sapping all the life out of the tree. It was an invader plant. You know what happened? It didn't last long. We ripped it off that tree and that tree recovered. And that's who and what the writer here, Jesus, was sharing with his disciples. He was saying, you can hear the word, you can receive the word, and it can even go down into your heart. But if you allow uh, deceitfulness of riches, the cares of this world, and the desire of other things to enter in, it will choke. It, it's an invader that will rob the word of the power to produce in our lives. We've got to grow in understanding. Here's the conclusion of this segment. We are living in, an, in the era of grace. The word of God is freely available and the plan of salvation is offered to everybody. But the message of the kingdom is variously received by different people because of satanic opposition. The enemy is real. He does not want the word of God to go out. So you've got to reflect today. Are you experiencing a stronger temptation to sin and to give up than usual, especially during a season of fasting? You feel like everything seems to be going wrong around you and the circumstances have increased. Listen, Satan is trying to keep you and I from our breakthrough. He's trying to get us to be discouraged, just like he did when he tempted Jesus. But how do you know the Bible says, what did Jesus do? Jesus spoke the word to him. And how do you know he overcame those temptations? And when he finished being tempted for 40 days, the Bible says this, and he went from there in the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Now, let's dig into verse 20. Verse 20 says this, But these are the ones sown on good ground, those who hear the word, accept the word, and bear fruit. Thirty, sixty, and a hundredfold. Here's the good news. If you're born again, listen carefully, if you're born again, if you're born again, you are already good soil. You are born again. You're washed in the blood. Your heart is ripe. Your heart is ready. You are good soil. Say, I am good soil. 
You see, sometimes the enemy laughs at us and says, yeah, you see, you're wayside. You're a wayside Christian. Ah, you see, you're a, you're a stony-hearted Christian. Ah, you see, all the cares of this world. You're a thorny Christian. No, no, those are the things we've got to protect ourselves against because if you're born again, if you're washed in the blood, you are a good, soiled Christian. Hallelujah. Your heart is ready to receive the word. Can you say amen? Listening and responding to the word purifies and guards our heart. As we obey those truths, we are refined as individuals and our lives begin to flourish. Abiding in the word increases our depth and our capacity and makes more room for more seed and more of the word to be sown. Good ground is formed through believing the word and acting on it. Believing and seeing on the inside by the spirit of God, what God has sown into your life will begin to produce a harvest. And as you meditate on it, as you speak it, your breakthrough is imminent. Hallelujah. Say it with me. Say my breakthrough is imminent. All right, so number one, study the Bible. Number two, okay, we're talking about five things I can do to Gain understanding. Number two, the second thing you've got to do is you've got to sow patience into your life. Sow patience. I know this isn't a rah-rah sermon, but man, it can really help us. Patience is the ability to remain consistent while you're waiting for God to break through with his promises. This is so important because while you're waiting, God is working. He's molding us, he's shaping us, and he's transforming us. And it develops in you and I, when we wait on the Lord, when we sow patience in our lives, it develops and transforms us, and understanding starts to develop in our hearts. There's a discernment, there's a wisdom that comes into our lives, and we can start to recognize the times and seasons of God doing different things in our lives. And so when it comes, we're ready to embrace it and step into it. As it develops, listen, nothing that happens to you and I escapes God's attention. You might think he's left you. You might think, don't know what's going on. Listen, nothing you go through is for nothing. Nothing you go through is wasted in your life. God will heal you. God will use it. God will take you through it. Ultimately, God will heal you, and you'll come out of it, and you'll say, wow, while I thought nothing was happening, God was transforming me on the inside. The only time that doesn't happen is if you don't guard your heart. So, so patience into your life because you see God cares about character because he understands that character is what protects us and keeps us and develops consistency in our lives and it will build us so that we're ready for what he wants to do. Habakkuk 2 verse 3 says this, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. At the end it will speak, It it, it will not lie. Though it tarries, Wait for it. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come to pass. It will not tarry. In other words, it will not not happen. Have you ever considered that maybe the purpose beside, behind your waiting, behind the pain you're experiencing, is God wants you to gain understanding so you're ready for the next moment he's bringing into your life. Number three, the third thing we can do to gain understanding is this. We, number three, need to stay in peace. Listen to Philippians 4, verses 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, (laughs) isn't that a paradox? We've got to gain understanding, and the more understanding we gain, the more we learn about peace and how little we know about peace. Because it passes understanding. But that peace of God, look at the next statement. Will guard your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. What does the peace of God do? It guards your heart and your mind. You've got to fight to stay in peace. Listen, living at peace with everyone will put a guard over your heart. It'll protect your mind 
And the word of God that's been sown there will start to produce a harvest. You know what's so encouraging? 20 years after the seed was sown, and you start understanding, and you start walking in peace, that seed can sprout up and start to produce a harvest in your life. (laughs) Because the word of God never loses its power. Can I share a testimony with you quickly? Not in my notes. A friend of mine, you'll know him, Chris Bailey, teacher Chris Bailey, he's in, in the UK. He's been stranded there since the lockdown. He's been traveling to churches as they opened up and preach. He, he was with one of my friends, uh, Pastor Martin Phelps. They were having lunch together Sunday afternoon. After the lunch, they were sitting in the lounge, him, Martin, and his son, Taylor. They were watching a program, and he said, come, let's watch an old teaching. So they put on a teaching from 1998 or 1999. Uh, of a man by the name of Norman Robertson. He was one of my Bible school teachers in 1988, all right? And he was teaching on healing and, uh, and, and the ministry of, of the gifts of the Spirit. And during this teaching they were watching from 1998, he stops and he says, there's someone in the room listening to this that has a problem with their wrist and their elbow because of carpal tunnel syndrome and your wrist is permanently in pain, right now God is healing you. Taylor, Martin's son, I think he's about 18 now, he's sitting there, he's got carpal syndrome in his wrist and his elbow. Listen, he's an incredibly gifted musician, plays the drums, the guitar, sings amazingly, haven't been able to play a guitar for the last three years because of carpal tunnel syndrome. This is a sermon from 1998, this is 2020. The power of God comes on him. The anointing falls on him. He's instantly healed from a message preached 22 years ago. The word of God never loses its power. Guard your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life. So living at peace with everyone is the key to maintaining peace. Because how you know, we lose our peace, not because we give up on God, but because we give up on our circumstances. We get frustrated. We get worked up with people and with things. I know that never happens to you, but maybe someone listening there online needs to hear this today. A key to this kind of surrender where we're able to maintain peace. Here's the key. It's surrendering to God enough so you and I become flexible. We're living in such a busy society, we've lost and forgotten how to be flexible in the hands of God. And so when things don't go our way, when we get uh, circumstances thrown us and we're like, ah, I didn't plan for that today, we're not flexible, we can't be flexible towards each other, and it causes us to lose our peace. Now, I just want to be honest with you today, I have always been able to maintain my peace. No, no, I'm serious, especially when everything's going my way. It's that odd occasion, 32 times a day, when it doesn't happen that I lose my peace. But listen to Romans 12 verse 18. It says, if it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Peace grows our understanding because we learn to adapt and be flexible. And therefore, God can lead us and bring us to a place where he positions us for our next. When we take this encouragement from Paul to heart, we live at peace with everyone, and the Holy Spirit fills us with joy, keeps us in peace, even when things aren't going our own way, because we know God is in control. It may not look like it, it may not be like it, but God is in control. Can you say amen? All righty. Wow, number four. Number four is this, and I think we'll just, we'll end here and we'll pick this up next week because I don't want to rush through this. It's so important. Number four is this. Things I can do to gain understanding. Number four, spend time with Jesus. Spend time with Jesus. And I know what you're thinking. I thought you said in the first one was study your Bible. Yeah, studying your Bible is not the same as spending time with Jesus. Oh no, Jesus is a person. He's your savior. He lives in you, but he wants you to spend time with him. And the more time you spend with him, the more understanding you'll gain. 
Without even trying, you'll gain understanding. So let me recap, and then we're going to pick this up next Sunday, and we're going to develop, and we're going to grow together. So how do I gain understanding? Number one, I study the Bible with a passion and a desire to know, to understand, and to grow. Number two, I sow patience into my life. Amen. Number three, I stay at peace. I maintain peace in my life because it guards my heart. And number four, uh, I spend time with Jesus. We'll look at that next week. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're sitting there in your lounge or wherever you're watching this around the world, would you bow your head and close your eyes and let's pray together. Father, thank you that you're in control. Father, we are living in a crazy world, in a crazy season. Many of us have so many questions, so many struggles. But Father, you are Lord today. And I pray for every person under the sound of my voice. And I ask that you strengthen us by your spirit. That you allow your word to become real to us and that we'll grow in understanding. So we can guard those seeds of your word that have been sown into our heart. We trust you for breakthrough. If there be someone listening to my voice or in this room tonight who has has a complication in their lives, maybe sickness or or maybe they're struggling with headaches or or maybe there's there's a financial need right now in this moment, I pray and I ask that you would heal their bodies. Lord, even a bondage in their mind, an addiction, Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, let that addiction be broken that that bondage be released from their lives and that they experience in this moment a tangible manifestation of your peace in their lives. I thank you for this right now in Jesus' name. Right now, while every head is bowed, every eye closed, if you're listening online or if you're here in the building and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life and you want to accept him into your heart, it would be our greatest privilege to lead you in this prayer. And if you'll just believe it in your heart, and speak it with your mouth, you will be saved. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you for saving me. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sin. I believe in Jesus today, and I invite him to live in my heart. I receive his forgiveness, and I thank you, God, for saving me. Now, if you just pray that prayer, please, would you send us an email? to info at ramasouthcoast.com or send us a WhatsApp. It's appearing on your screen right now. We would love to get a hold of you. We'd love to pray for you. We'd love you to include you in the life of our church, send you a Bible. If you have a prayer request today, would you send it to us? We'd love to pray with you and for you, even this week, for whatever it is you're trusting God for. And if you'd like to know more about us, if you go to our website, rfcfc.com, you can find out everything about the life of our church. We love you. We look forward to seeing you at a service soon. And enjoy your week. Amen.